Hi, it's Warren Hewitt here. Hope you're doing marvellously well. Today I have the great Christopher Butcher here. Yes, truly. He's an amazing slide guitar player and he's the lead guitar player for Robert Jim and the Uh We just finished their album and uh, you have to listen out for it. It's going to be amazing. You've been hearing it all over the place because we've been using pieces of the tracks in the background on a lot of the videos because frankly it sounds great. We track most of the album live at Sunset Sound. In fact, 99% of all of Chris's guitar parts were off the floor. All the rhythm section, bass and drums was off the floor and most of the keys. So we only did some rhythm overdubs and some vocals. Pretty amazing, the album was pretty much made in a couple of days. Just like they used to do. So what we're going to do today is Chris is going to talk about his setup. And the setup that we're going to do is, uh, he's going to show you, is the setup we use on the album. So you can reference the album and hear his guitar tones and uh, we'll take you through it. It'll be fun. Yeah. Okay, let's do it. All right. This is Dr. Z Prescription Extra Strength. I believe it was like the first model they made with Brad Paisley. So it's kind of got that twangy, voxy kind of sound. And I like to run my amps pretty loud. My, most of the drive you hear on the record is this amp, unless it's something big and fuzzy. Um, I set it, everything's pretty close to the same. And I don't know why I do that. I think back in the day someone said, six is where you need to put everything. And it sounded good. So I leave it there. Um, it's 45 watts. Uh, I have an attenuator because that's very loud at most places. And Dr. Z actually makes the attenuator. It's called an air brake. They're awesome. Buy, buy their stuff. It's really great. It's probably the greatest amp I've ever owned. And it looks good. And it sounds good. Fantastic. And the speakers, I have a slush and greenback. And then I have a gold G12, which is awesome. It's a good mix. And this is, this is it. This is the amp. This is the record. Pretty much exactly what you hear is what you see kind of thing. This is Chris's main guitar for the for the album, to be honest. It's for everything. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. I mean, I don't want to say it's cheap, it's just inexpensive. It's like how much was it? Uh I don't know. I like traded a guitar and I right. made like two hundred bucks. <laughs> nice. I mean it's like but what are they? I think they were like eight fifty new. Yeah. Which I mean it's obviously that's not cheap, but for a Gibson it's pretty inexpensive. It sounds amazing, which these, we're going to hear. These pickups are worth that money. You know? Yeah, exactly. And it's just, it's beautiful. Now, as you may have noticed, Chris is left-handed. <gasps> Shock horror. Either that or you're watching this in a mirror. Um, no, he's left-handed. And so, frankly, there's only a certain amount of guitars that are open to you. Yeah. Which I'd, sucks. I'd never seen a left-handed Firebird until I saw this. Yeah. And well, now I got two. Ah, I didn't know you got a second. Oh, I saw a picture of it. There's one in there. All right, we'll, sit, we'll have a look at that. So this is the main guitar I used on the record. We're in the Z at the moment. So let's hear the clean or the slightly driven sound of the Z with no pedals on it. Well, yeah, this is full volume. That big up. Well, what tuning are you in? Opening. This guitar is always an opening. Opening. Great. Buzzes and all. Yeah. And then uh, let's, hear, let's hear a fuzz pedal on it. Nice! Give us some, give us some riff off the album. Now, when you're playing slide, are you using the fuzz on this? Uh, yeah. Uh, during the verses, no, it's just the amp, but, you know. Uh, all that slide. Right. The fuzz is just great. Yeah, it's awesome. So, the fuzz pedal, can you tell us about it? Yeah, it's, uh, it's called the Gnarly Fuzz by Basic Audio. Um, it's made by a guy, I can't remember his name, his last name is Lyons, I know his last name is Lyons. Right. <laughs> and he builds in, I think he's in Vermont or something, or 
In his house, in his garage? In his garage, garage I'm, su- I'm assuming. Yeah. And he basically just makes fuzz pedals. Like, oh, that's fantastic. And he makes, you know, tons of them. He probably has 20 or 30 different models. Really? And this is my favorite by far. I mean, I haven't played all of them, but the ones I've heard, this is my favorite. It's a great name. The yeah. Gnarly Pedal. It sounds great. You, you know, it goes everywhere from, like, the Stones kind of fuzzy stuff on the right. early records to all the way to the, your Jimmy Page, Jeff Beck kind of tone bender stuff. Yeah, it's fantastic. And it's one of maybe... I record a lot of guitars, obviously. I've been recording guitars for a long time. It's probably one of two or three fuzz pedals of the millions of fuzz pedals out there that doesn't just fold into itself when you put it through an already overdriven amp. Most of the time, if you've got an amp that's overdriven and you put a fuzz pedal on it, the guitar sound goes, it just gets smaller. I mean, you can just strum a chord and you can hear that it just does not get, it gets bigger. It's, uh, give give us a little, uh... I mean, it's, it's, it's gnarly. So what else you got there? I see you have the carbon copy. I'm a big fan of that. That I I used to use that live myself because I found that it's really versatile. Yeah. And it sounds I think pretty close to an analog tape kind of delay. I agree. A foot, and it has the you know life. modulation button on it and it's compact and just sounds really good. It doesn't really mess with your amp tone. MXR have always made great pedals. Yeah, and they're super durable. I see you have a full tone there, which I love. Yeah, I got a couple of them. This this is the the Deja Vibe. I use that quite a bit. I use it quite a bit on the record, I think. Can I hear it? Yeah, I believe uh, Robin Trower uses the same thing. Nice. Now. And, you know, he's known for that vibe. I love that little adjustment he did there with his foot. He just yeah, changed it. has got the knob. You know, slow it down or speed it up. The knob's like this big, so you can control it with your foot. Great they, for life. They make a model that's a pedal, too, so you can... Oh, nice. This is Mark Fuller, I think the guy's name is. Uh, I know his last name is Fuller. Yeah. I know last names. I don't yeah, know. yeah, that's all right. Well, that's all right, Butcher. Yeah, I know. <laughs> cool, so what else have you got going on there? Um, this is uh, an exotic effects EP booster. It's just clean boost. You know, it works great. It's very loud. It drives the amp a lot. Fantastic. It's great. Uh, and just a TC Electronics Polytune Mini. It's a great tuner. It's got big lights, so it's easy to see on stage. Right. Which is always nice. And then uh, full tone Octafuzz. Oh, let me hear that. Which is, I, I think it's my favorite Octafuzz I've ever heard. Oh, yeah, back. Hendrix meets Spirit, Randy California. Hey, and you roll it back and you Yeah. Yeah, it's great. I love that. That's that's like sometimes the best sound on the guitar amp is when you turn it off and as it's dying, yeah, it kind of goes, and that's yeah, it's that great. pedal. And then what you got on the very end there? Um, this is a, it's actually a Joe Bonamassa Crybaby made by Dunlop, and um, I've I've never used a lot of the Crybabies. I have a Vox Wah that I love. It's older. Right. I just it it's older, so I don't really like taking it out, and I right falls apart sometimes. But it's got this one's got a really great voicing. It sounds kind of older, like the older ones, and it's really unique sounding too. It's great. I would play a riff on the record, but it, I'm in a wrong tuning. <laughs> nice. And, What's it? And so, what else you got going on there? Got um, a- I got an amp switcher, or just an ABY made by Morley, because sometimes I need two amps, you know. And what's the second amp that you bring? Um, it depends. I mean, the last time I used it was when we were on tour and I used two Princetons. That was kind of fun. Oh, wow. And then uh, now I'm playing on a 68 Custom Deluxe made by Fender. Nice. Which is the first front channel is like a basement channel, which that's right. that's the sound if you're playing rock and roll. Yeah, definitely. So I'll use those two. And I also have... An Avatar 45, which is just like a JTM 45. Nice. And that thing's great. And of course you have a clock over there. Which yeah, is, you, the you clock know, is crucial, you know. It's really crucial. Sometimes you're like, oh, how, how much time do I have in this set? And it's got the little light on it, so you click it. Look, foot-controlled clock. You're ready to go. There it is. 
So it's a beautiful looking guitar. What yeah. can you tell us about it? Um, it's a Gibson Les Paul Custom, custom shop, made in the US of A. I believe it's a 2008. I've had it for a few years. I got it brand new. Nice. Um, I'm not very good at keeping my guitars clean. Eh. I don't really care. It gives them character. Absolutely. Um, I mostly play this in open E as well, but on the record, I played some, at least a tune or two in standard. On yeah, this. I remember. I see you have man strings. What gauge are those? <laughs> um, these are actually just tens. They look heavier. I know. They're elixirs. They're yeah. probably my favorite strings, but I use the Ernie Ball strings a lot too. Yeah, I, lo I do love elixirs. They're they're on a lot of my guitars because A, they last forever, and B, they sound amazing exactly. immediately you put them on. Yeah, and when you're tuning or when you're touring, it's tough to change your strings every night. And yeah. The elixirs are really durable. Yep, I agree. And take a beating. Cole, can I hear a little bit of this? Of course. It's a uh, neck pickup. Sounds like a Les Paul. Yeah, it's beautiful. Great yeah. color. Yeah. What do they call this? Um, I don't know. It's not the Arctic Snow. I, maybe no. it's maybe it was called Alpine White, but Alpine it's, White. It's there not, you go. Arctic Snow, Alpine White. It's not looking too alpine -y these days. No, it's looking kind of uh, nice and yellow. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah. And that's what happens with these white guitars. You that's want a nice. white guitar, you're buying a yellow guitar. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's have a look at another one. All right. So this is a beautiful guitar. What is this? This is a music ball or a music ball. <laughs> Love it. Music man by Ernie music, Ball. Ernie Ball music ball. I think it's a music, music ball by Ernie Man. Nice. Uh, it's Did a, you buy it at Burning Man? Uh, whatever. Yeah. So, so it's a music man and it's called the Silhouette Special. Um, I don't know what makes it special. I think maybe this not special it has like a trim system, which I would never use. Yeah, same here. And, you know, they graciously gave this to me and it's beautiful. They were very kind, and they made it sound and look and feel really good. It's great. I love the neck. I love the simplicity, one volume, one tone. Yeah, it's, you know, I wanted a Strat kind of guitar, and that's what I got. Can I hear a bit of it? Yeah, of course. That's the tone right there. Yeah. That's it. That's a bit of, bit of twang. Great. Yeah. Very nice. Um, let's keep looking. Yes. What else you brought with you? Uh, I brought one more. So this, what, is, what is this? This is a Dillion, I believe it's a Phoenix, is what they call it. Right. Um, Makes sense. Five I don't, Phoenix. I don't know a lot about them. I think they're American or Canadian. They probably build in Korea or right. something. Right. Um, this was just me being lucky, finding right. a really great guitar for... Not very much money. And these are all Seymour Duncans? Yeah, these are Seymour Duncans. I I know they make a few mini humbuckers. I believe these are just the Firebird right. style ones. Right. They sound incredible. I love them. It's a beautiful. I love this color. Yeah, this color. I Looks like a Cadillac. This is a custom color. I don't even know what they call it. Right. Like literally in the specs, it's a custom color. It looks like a 50s Cadillac. Yeah. That's what I love about the Firebirds. They look classic. They, yep. look, they look like cars. They look like women. They're great. Yeah, all the chrome. Beautiful. Can I hear it? Yeah. Dillion. So that's the neck. It's pretty... It gets a little twangy, but it's still got that... I don't know, it's thick. That's the neck pickup? Not the bridge? My bad. That is the bridge. Oh, okay, good. Stupid. That's all right. Not stupid at all. I love that. And then, you notice, kids, that he's not using a pick. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I don't want to use them. I wouldn't be able to play. Is decent. I'll say decent. And then uh, this is Chris the, plays great. This is the neck with the bridge vo volume turned up. Not the neck. The middle. Excuse me. Just, I don't know, it gets a little spankier, but it, right. it gets warmer too. Yeah. And then this is just the metal. It's got a unique thing. It's kind of funky, a little out of phase. Yeah. It's 
really nice. And then it's the middle with the neck. Ooh. It's really nice. So I never knew that's how they all worked. Yeah, it's strange because I don't know. It's this guitar is strange. I don't know how it's wired. I'm not good at that kind of stuff. Is that how Ace's, like, Ace's guitar had three pickups in one position? Maybe he did the same thing. The yeah. Volumes. It's strange because, you know, even when every all the volumes are down and the tone's up, there's still a little... Hmm. You turn the tone down, you know, it goes away. Which yeah. I, don't, I don't really know how it works. Yeah. And then here's just the neck. It sounds, it's so good. This is my new live guitar that, you know, can kind of take a beating and... It's fantastic. Go on the road. And looks great. Yeah. Looks and sounds amazing. This kind of makes up for... Because I don't take the Les Paul or the Music Man on tour too much, so this kind of has to do both. Do both, which makes sense. You've got so many tone variations. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you ever so much for watching. Um, that's Chris's setup, and it's basically the setup we used on the album and the setup he uses live. So please subscribe, go to the email list at producelikeapro.com and you'll get exclusive content. And thank you ever so much for watching. Thanks, Chris. Thank you.